Well, it's all about promotion, isn't it? All, all the disappointments, all the success of the season so far, they can be discarded, can't they, now? It's, it's a one-off game, it's who's up for it, it's who can settle first. Plymouth probably favourites by the fact that they've probably got a little bit more experience in the side with players who have played in this situation before where it's all new to Darlington. Nick Heathcote there, the skipper, and the player of the year for fans and players at Argyle, organising and an early corner for Darlington and an early chance to really cause a problem. Appleby getting towards it. Bannister getting the first shot in and down goes Steve Cherry, 35-year-old keeper, saving the shot from the 35-year-old midfield player Gary Bannister. Neil Warnock knows his way to this ground all right. Five Wembley appearances in seven years. Three times with Notts County and Huddersfield, he's been successful in the Wembley playoff. And there's an ocean of space out here. Darlington just got a good ball in there. Painter was prepared to let it run for Blake, but didn't quite come off. And certainly the marking was absolutely awry there by Argyle. Now they're looking to springboard back. Evans with a strong round, little John through the middle. And sharply out was Paul Newell. Both defences suddenly opened up in the space of a minute. And the more serious breach was of Darlington's rear guard there. But little John couldn't quite capitalise. Good positive run through there. Poor first touch there from Little John. Allowed the ball to run away from him. Enabled Newell to come out quickly and get on top of that. But certainly the best chance of the game so far. This is a good run from Appleby. This is nearly a great run and a good ball in there. And Blake into the middle and Appleby. Oh, so close. Classic example of how the sweeper should come out of the defence and really cause the problems. Jim Flat thought that was it. Well, that was impressive. He had a smile on his face. Great run from Appleby here. He just plays the ball forward. At first, I thought he was going to have a shot. He catches the player on his heels. It rebounds wide on the left. He gets a good first touch, and that's inches wide past the far post. position. Central defenders are up there for Argyle, as you'd expect. He's got number five there in the centre of the picture. Argyle's corner. We'll come back again. Peels for the offside. Neil still had to do something. And it was over the top of the end from Evans. thinking well, this is as good a chance as Argyle have had. Well, the ball's knocked in high here, asking the question, the goalkeeper comes, can't get to it, doesn't know where it is, and really it's a controlled volley required there, hit the target and it's a goal. You see it again here, the ball hit high in the air, the goalkeeper comes, doesn't get a good punch on it, not sure where it is, and a wild lash at the ball there, sends it over the bar. Ball just couldn't quite take that one on his stride. There was a bit of space ahead of him as well. It's little John trying to make some progress through. It was Williams rather. Evans flick didn't come off. But Barlow's got room here to measure the cross. Darlington have got plenty in the middle to deal with it. Inevitably, almost it was Appleby and Cars. Cars dispossessed there. Away by Crosby, he's got pushing up. Cars this time should get it down in the way. Bounce was just a bit unlucky there for Blake. A little John, the pace to get there first. He's got a real opening here. He sent it right across the face of the goal, and again his pace got him in the right position, but he couldn't finish off the job.
Breeden. Appleby. Didn't reach Gorn. It was Ludbitter instead who comes inside. Tries the shot, and again it's well off target. A bit of nail chewing going on now by Warnock. No matter how many times you experience Wembley, it's always a nervous bench to sit on. Barlow trying to get free here. Appleby concedes the corner kick. Maybe it's Argyle's turn to have a little spell. Darlington having had the better of the last 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, the keeper, the man under pressure here. He's been happy to try to catch when he can. This one played back to Patterson. A bad ball in, and a good goal, Morgia. Argyle take the lead, Ronnie Morgia. And those fans in green and white, delirious there. 20 minutes gone in the second half, and it swung Plymouth's way. Well, they weren't alert here to the little ball played back. It's a good ball clipped in, but then probably one of the smallest players on the field, Morgan. Gets a free header, poor marking by Darlington. It's a good ball clipped in, defenders starting to come out. They're static, nobody's really marking him. There's half a dozen black and white shirts in there, but nobody marking, and unfortunately, Darlington have paid the price. Now this game will really turn around. Darlington nil, Plymouth Argyle one. 25 minutes left, and Darlington have got to get themselves back again. And Warnock is really getting excited now. And a goal now for Dyington would certainly silence 30 odd thousand Devon fans. It was loose there in the box, but nobody could get to it. Appleby, Gorn, looking to play the one two in. A key part of the game this is now. And little John's got it. Darlington have kept a couple of players back and Gorn sprinting as well, but it's opening up rather here. This is Ledbitter. He wasted the opportunity and he got spare on this near side. And Darlington were looking stretched, even though they'd held two back to deal with the attack. Well, they had enough players back, Darlington, with the initial break. It was when the player was switched from right to left that they were left a little bit short, but that wasn't the best of strikes either. Goalkeeper had his near post covered, that wasn't going to be a problem to him. It's a good bit of football there. And Gorn is the man forward, Gorn's battling, can he keep it in play? And Painter's in the middle! Painter just could not grow for that one. Just needed the better delivery there after so much great work in possession there by Gorn to battle his way back. Well, again, showed great strength, didn't he, Gorn? Good control, good touch, kept it in, looked up, chipped it over the goalkeeper, and it was just too high there for Painter. Just couldn't get off the floor. 13 minutes left. Blake. Blake again. Here's Gorn. There's a good cross in now. Gorn got a foot to it. Carl's prepared to have a go. It's been some spectacular goals scored here. All right. Some really famous players, to say the least, but it was asking an awful lot to try and add to that sort of list. Well, again, I think a little bit of inexperience here. The ball coming out, he's a naturally left-footed lad. It, it slices across the ball, works its way across the face of the goal and beyond the post. Strong work by Evan 
Chance there has opened him up again. Oh, little John couldn't reach it. That was nearly good night, Darlington. Cars with a little bit of space has opened up if you can exploit it. Morgia again gets a solid tackle in in the midfield. It's Regan who's down. There's a chance just a minute ago, David. Yeah, good pace here. Goes across into the box, fires it across the face of the goal. And little John's just in advance of the ball. The ball's just behind him. And in fact, it was a good clearance as it turned out. Carmichael, could there be a miracle on here? Lannister jumping and not getting there. Little John still can sprint. Appleby. Little John just being pulled away from the action there by the referee. Just getting a bit fractious down there. All the tension. Referee just keeping it calm. That will be getting a, a caution right in stoppage time of the season. That's his final act in the Darlington shirt. Well, a little bit of frustration creeping in there. That will be kicking the ball against the Plymouth player when he was laid on the floor, and the referee really... no alternative but to show the old card for that, just a little bit of petulance. Paul Neal desperate to get that ball back. Need a lot for Michael Evans there, a Plymouth lad, ball and bread. Two and a half minutes of stoppage time we've had. Michael jumping for it again. And it's all over for Darlington. It's the Pilgrims who progress into the second division. They've won this final by just the one goal scored by Ronnie Morgia. And there's a West Country eruption there. It came up in numbers from Devon. More than 30,000 football Pilgrims. And they've been victorious here at Wembley. For Jim Platt, it's disappointment and desolation for Darlington. It's Plymouth Argyle who's won this playoff final. He's whipping his team to stand up and take the applause. He feels they've put on a performance to be proud of here at Wembley. But it's the Plymouth Argyle fans, the 30 odd thousand of them, who are celebrating a narrow victory. So little in it during the season and even less in it again today. It was Ronnie Morgia. With the only goal of the game who made the difference between the two teams after 65 minutes and will send Plymouth into the second division next season. Darlington found chances hard to come by. Appleby had a good opening in the first half, but it was a tight game in which the two defences dominated most of the time. A competitive match, a tough, tough way to lose, but a glorious way for Plymouth Argyle to progress into Division 2. Darlington's marvellous campaign ends in disappointment. That trophy and promotion will go down to Devon. Neil Warnock, a Wembley hero as manager once again. It's Darlington nil, Plymouth Argyle 1 at Wembley. Nicky <laughs> Heathcote then. The County Durham lad leads Plymouth Argyle up the Wembley steps. He's the player of the season. He's got his hands on the trophy. It's presented for the winners of this playoff final. It's a tough, tough way to get yourself into a high level of football. But Heathcote was outstanding for Argyle today in a tight match. 49 games it's taken to haul themselves into the higher level. This has been their only season at this level, Plymouth, in their 110-year history, and they bounce back at the first attempt. It's a fantastic achievement by Neil Warnock to assemble a team that's done the job straight away. He's had money to spend, but Plymouth have got their reward. The man in the crazy hat is Dan McCauley, the Plymouth chairman. He'll be so pleased. Plymouth the club, of course, with genuine ambition and the means to push on again. 
is the trophy for more than 30,000 Devon supporters. It's Plymouth Argyle who get promotion. all season like you know playing in the game like it didn't feel as it was a particularly good game but you know when you you know I said like before we'd settle for a 1-0 scrappy performance and it's come true like so you know but just like the, the end product of getting promoted you know it'll mean so much to this club hopefully now we can go on and take forward steps it's unbelievable really when we walked out here today and we've seen these fans they're just different class we didn't we had to do it for them obviously for ourselves as well but I mean, listen to them, they're brilliant. I thought it would be one goal in it. They're a very good side, and well, we are really, and we're just nipping to. That's why we're here. We've come done business, got one goal, and that's it. Home, party. On, on the training ground, we practice our set pieces week after week, day after day, and finally, like, they've been paying off, you know. But it was such a tight game, wasn't it? I mean, it was. You just caught them cold with that one move. Oh, it's very good. Uh, like respect to Darlington, they're a good team, but we out battled, we out fought them. And in the end, I think we deserve to win. Greatest day of your career? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Neil Warnock, thank you. In terms of playoffs, honestly, his preparation, um, his knowledge, his desire, and his will to win gets through to players. And players don't often respond to Neil Warnock, and me too. And to you, of course, yes. I mean, you, well, you support him. Uh, it's always, uh, that's you, my job. you know, a good manager needs a good number two. Well, that's my job. And uh, I'm 100% Neil Warnock. He's got the comfort of knowing that there's. With due respect, a lot of number twos in the country would like the number one job. I want Neil Warner to be one of the best managers in the country and I want to be his best number two. Well, Neil, I think you should play every game at Wembley. Well, it's, it's, it's nice when you've obviously got the right result, but it's a long season, it's very hard work. And as you saw today, it's quite an emotional carry on, isn't it, this Wembley job? I mean, if you're going to go up, you know, is it better to do it this way, because more exciting? I mean, I know it's nice to win a championship, but the glamour of coming to Wembley. Well, it, obviously, it's an ideal way to go up. But believe you and me, I don't plan these things. Everybody thinks I plan it. And I assure you that I don't. And uh, it's really, I would have liked to have been on the beach, if I'm honest. But the fans have loved it. They, I mean, they would have enjoyed it, even if we'd have lost, as daft as it sounds. They've waited so long to come to Wembley. But I said to the lads at half time, there's only one way to do it. You've got to be a winner at Wembley. You know, there's, you walk off otherwise and there's nothing for you. Whereas now, all our summer's looking forward to the next division and got the one or two careers back on the road and we've got to try and, and now consolidate ourselves. I'll never forget the crowd singing at the end. I hope the video has got it on that because the crowd singing I thought was magnificent. And uh, Mick Jones, myself, we've worked very, very hard. And to see that lot at the end, not going away, I, I found that incredible. So a long, hard season ends in glory at Wembley and the triumph of promotion. Neil Warnock worked his playoff magic again and he and his players can now enjoy a well-earned summer break. But it won't be long before they're back in action and battling for even more success in Division 2. That's all to come, but for now it's goodbye from Plymouth Argyle 95-96.